Welcome back to SuperCloud 22. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE with Dave Vellante with the opening keynote conversation with Vittorio Veringo. He's the Vice, Vice President of Cross Cloud at VMware CUBE alumni. Vittorio, great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Uh, my pleasure. So you're kicking off um, the SuperCloud event, again, a pilot. Again, we were texting just a few months ago around some of the momentum. You identified this right away. You, got, you saw it, you saw the momentum. What's What's the, what are, what's the reality around SuperCloud? What is your perspective? Well, I, I think that <clears throat> uh, we have to go back to the, the history of IT over the last ever. Uh, it's, I, I, I feel like in IT we're always running after the developers. The developers, they're smart, they, they go for the path of risk resistance and they create innovations and then they, the entire stack moves, moves around. And, and if you look at developers over the last you know, 15 years, they've been going to the cloud. Right? And the reason they're going to the cloud is, you know, they say uh, software is eating the world. It's really, who builds software? It's developers. So I think it's developers that are eating, uh, eating the world. And so uh, initially there was one game in town, so they went with AWS, but eventually they, we got the multiple clouds. And now um, uh, the reality is that the applications, that it's how we make money, how we save money, they're running on multiple clouds. 75% of the companies running um, uh, on multiple clouds today. And so I think that creates the new computing platform for the, uh, the next you know, 10 years, 15 years. And uh, we need to, I uh, think that, that multi-cloud world brings tremendous advantages yeah. as we just talked, but also some challenges and is primed to a simplification. And that's where we're trying to do. One of the things we observe is this abstraction layer across clouds to create a consistent experience for customers and very importantly, as you point out, developers. So, when you think about the history of abstractions, we see another one sort of forming in the 2020s, which is really different, as you pointed out, than we had in the 2010s, where there was really you know, one main, main cloud. Now you have all these clouds. What are your thoughts on the history of abstractions? Well, it, it, if you look at IT, we always needed abstraction to unleash the next level of growth, right? I, I grew up as a, I started my career as a C++ developer, so initially you know, on Windows, if you wanted to open a, a, a window on the screen, you had to write 200 lines of code. Then the MFC library came in, and now you still have to be a C++ developer, but now with a one line of code, you can instantiate, open the hello world, and, and start to build your applications. But it's only when Visual Basic comes along, that now we get five million developers building applications that 20 years later we're still using, right? And then the list goes on and on. And uh, in, in the application integration, we used to look at the bytes on the bus and say, okay, this is the customer, so we're going to map it to SAP. And then we went one level higher with SOA and web services and the rest of history, and then unleash tremendous you know, growth and look at you know, how we now you know, we be able to, through APIs, integrate anything. And so and then the ultimate example of uh, abstraction is virtualization. We made all these different servers and, and networking and, and storage look like one, and now, you know, and the business never cares if you're running <laughs> SAP uh, back on-prem on, uh, on HP or, uh, or some other piece of hardware, right? They, they care that it runs, right? And so I think that now uh, we need to bring a level of abstraction in the cloud that not only abstracts the low level APIs at the highest level, but also uniforms and unify the APIs and the way to do management and security across multiple clouds. Let's unpack that because I think the virtualization angle is interesting because with virtualization enabled AWS. If you look at AWS's success, virtualization, the hypervisor got them going and that established that, that value. Now the new structural change is happening. How do you define that specifically? What is super cloud in your mind? So in our mind, SuperCloud is a set of cloud native services that, first of all, let's, let's unpack that and go back to the virtualization. Virtualization was a great way to do it on-prem, and it's no wonder that AWS and Azure, they did it on their cloud, right? But the lingua franca of the cloud is not the virtualization layer. That's taken, it's hidden, it's, it's down there, it just does its thing. The, the lingua franca of cloud is microservices, API, Kubernetes as the orchestration uh, layer. And one would think, okay, now we have Kubernetes, life is good, I just you know, deploy on Kubernetes. Well, there are six, seven, eight Kubernetes distribution. And so uh, to us, the, the, the super cloud is the ability to take, to factor out the common things that you can do across clouds 
and give you a single pane of glass to manage your application, a single pipeline so you can build an application once and deploy it consistently across multiple clouds, and then basically factor out the other two important things with the security and observability of the application. What are the trade-offs of, virtu of abstraction? You go back to the mainframe, they had to squeeze out the performance overheads. VMware had to do the same and done a tremendous job of it. So we, are we going to see that across clouds with, with multi-cloud or what we call super cloud? Are you going to see a, a trade-offs? What trade-offs do you see that, that the industry technically has to attack? Abstractions are always about trade-offs, right? You're trading off the speed. You know, I'm, I'm writing C++ code that goes really fast for scale, you know, now I have five million developers writing uh, applications. Uh, but I think eventually what happens is that, or you're, 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 uh, you're trading off specialized skills for, you know, more valuable skills. And if I had a dollar every time I heard, oh, we cannot run um, Oracle databases on virtualization, well, or the, the JVM is too slow. But guess what, how many Java developers, how many Java applications are running out on the JVM? So I think eventually there will be trade-offs, but the technology catches up and it's, it's, it's a matter of like, how much value are you getting in terms of scales and saving cost versus the maybe, maybe the performance trade-off they were making uh, on the, at the lower level. On the evolution of hybrid cloud, because right now hybrid cloud is a steady state, people see that clearly. You know, on-premise and edge is right around the corner. Public native cloud, there's benefits to be in the native cloud. How does multi-cloud fit? Because by default, people have multiple clouds. If they run on Azure, they probably have some sort of productivity software with Microsoft or other Microsoft products, but it's best of breed, it's not yet connected. So multi-cloud has kind of become a default kind of thing. It's not yet a strategy in some people's minds, yet some people thinking about it. So we think, and I think you might agree, that multi-cloud will happen. Multiple clouds in the sense of workloads running seamlessly. Is that a pipe dream or is that near in our future? So, <laughs> there's, a, <laughs> so there's a lot to unpack there. First of all, our definition of multi cloud is that because most customers are operating their on prem as a cloud, so the, the moment you have your on prem cloud and AWS, you're multi cloud. So 75%, 85%, 80%. Going to 85%. You mean next private year. cloud, on-premise cloud operations? Yeah, and and then you have another cloud. You're you're already multi-cloud. Uh, assuming the experience is identical, right? That's the assumption. No, we're well, making. initially it's not identical. Right. That's why you need a super cloud, right? Yeah, exactly. And so and, so, <laughs> and, and most customers though are in denial, meaning that I, I, see, I see them being in five stages of acceptance of, of or adoption of, of uh, the multi-cloud. One is denial. We are on-prem and maybe we have one cloud. That's, we're standardized. Uh, the second one is euphoria. Oh, look, you know, look how fast we go. All these developers are happy to do whatever they want. And then the third one is like, holy crap. They got the first bill. They realized they have the uh, uh, security share responsibility model to deal with. They realized that somebody is to deploy this application and manage the application. Nobody does it for them. Uh, and then they go into like, holy okay, now we need to do something about this, right? It's a new normal. And then you end up with the enlightenment, right? Now, now we're really being productive and strategic about how we use multi-cloud. Very, very few customers are in that stage. Most customers are still in, within the denial and the new normal. Uh, and in, 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 within the spectrum, you see multi-cloud as, okay, I have an application here, an application there. Okay, great, big deal. The next level is, okay, I have an application here, the uses a piece of a service of an application over there. Okay, now I'm, I'm coordinating application, I'm using, reusing microservices. And then the third stage is like, okay, I am designing my application to use multiple services on multiple cloud because each uses differentiated features of that particular cloud. Isn't part of the problem too, Vittorio, that the, the industry, the technology industry, you guys have not caught up. The cloud vendors aren't solving that problem. What's VMware doing to solve that problem? So we have seen this uh, coming four or five years ago. Right? That's why we acquired uh, Pivotal and then we made a number of acquisitions around it because we saw that, um, well, let's go back. What is VMware DNA? If you look, uh, I've been running engineering, um, product management uh, at, at in the company, then I moved to the dark side, more on the marketing side. But <laughs> I've seen, and I, and I sweat uh, the, with, with those engineers, and when I look at those engineers, these people know how to make stuff that was not designed to work together, work together and deliver value. And so if we go back to you know, on-prem, we did it with virtualization. In the cloud, we did a new level of abstraction, which is you know, at the APIs, at the, uh, and so, uh, over the last five years, we built we, what we believe a very comprehensive portfolio that unify how you build, you run, manage, secure, and access 
any application across any cloud. No hypervisor required. That's the game changer right there. So let me ask you a question. How does the choice factor come in? Because um, can VMware do all this or do you need to rely on partners? Because most customers have HashiCorp and other companies in there doing services for them as well. So how do you see the multi-partner strategy approach? Um, can you do it alone or are you going to need help from the ecosystem? First of all, if you look at the success of your event today, look how many vendors from multiple backgrounds and, and a multiple level of the stack that are coming together to talk about the super cloud. So that to me is, is success already. And of course this, there are tremendous companies that are going to deliver fantastic value for you know, management like AshiCorp or, or security uh, and, uh, and uh, the development experience. Our approach is to bring them together as an integrated platform. And I think VMware has both the DNA and the muscles the investment to be able to, to pull that off. Okay, you saw Keith Townsend, he had that very cool blackboard and he called, this was like maybe eight or nine months ago, he called the super cloud and, and VMware's multi-cloud vision aspirational. Is it when, when, do, when is this going to be real? I think it's absolutely real today for in some of the, of the, of the pieces, uh, right? There's always an aspiration. You have to look at a company like VMware as a company that, that looks out five, 10 years. Right? You know, we have Raghu as our CEO, you know, which is, is a technical visionary. And so he saw five years ago the, the advent of multi-cloud and we invested in the, the first part of the stack. What is it? How to build applications natively in the cloud using Tanzu. So with Tanzu, you can build applications, manage Kubernetes clusters, secure, creating this service mesh. And so that's the reality today. Uh, then on the, the, the next step is uh, security. Uh, we recently announced our security approach. We, we have a very uh, peculiar uh, uh, position in the, in, the, in the stack to be able to uh, see security, not just on the endpoint, not just at, you know, in the application, but in between, right? By looking at so both the hypervisor, if you're using a hypervisor, you're looking at east-west traffic with uh, NSX and, and cross-cloud uh, networks. And so these are the three main uh, places that are in place today. Right? And then I, I cannot uh, spoil uh, our user conference coming in a couple of weeks yeah. where we're going to make more announcement around uh, the super cloud, which we yeah. call the cross cloud services. Victoria, I remember in 2016, I interviewed Andy Jassy and Ragu when they announced the deal with VMware. VMware and AWS had the relationship and they're, you're running on the cloud on AWS uh, VMware. Um, and you look at what's happened since, and this is where the super cloud conversation starts to kick in, where Amazon's really good at moving bits around and getting optimizing the, the power and the silicon that the infrastructure, which means that the higher level services are going to be much more open for people to innovate around. So Dave calls it the super pass. This area platform as a service to change the SaaS game. So I have to ask you, uh, how do you see the SaaS game changing with, with super cloud? Because if you have a private cloud or edge, you're now multiple clouds technically, as you pointed out. How does that change the SaaS configuration? Because SaaS and IaaS and PaaS had great relationships in native clouds to solve problems. Now you have the multi-cloud. How, how do you see this platform as a service area changing or maybe enabling? SaaS? Well, I think that that's where the innovation, the ability to, to aggregate common, because look, there is a reason why people use multiple, multiple cloud, right? They, they choose it because they have differentiated features. So we don't want to ever hide those features. Like if you're using uh, Google uh, because you're, you're, you need AI capabilities, absolutely, we don't want to prevent that, right? But at the past level, uh, you know, when you are orchestrating these microservices, you, you don't want to do it in five different ways, right? So that, those are the areas where I think are prime for uh, aggregation and simplification. Uh, how do you, you know, look at all this Kubernetes environment and being able to monitor your application and force security policies, both from a resource consumption, you know, this group of developers can only use this many resources, but also at runtime that you don't run out of like, you know, you get that uh, bill shock. And so those are the areas where I think that there's more uh, ability to, for us to innovate and deliver value, not at the lower level was taken by the- So you're trying system. to have your cake and eat it too, which is if you can pull that off, it's game over, right? Because you're trying, you, you have a specific set of cross cloud services that are unique and value added that are differentiable in the industry. But at the same time, 
you're trying to give access to developers if in fact they want access to those primitives, right? That's, yeah. a, that's a bold, that's, that's a bold aspiration. Well, we want to, we want to uh, have the cake, eat it, and lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, but, but seriously, I think uh, going back to your point about the ecosystem, of course we're not going to do it alone, right? If, if, if we're doing it alone, there's no, there, it's not a market, right? Uh, and so I think that uh, the, the market is so big and the area of challenges for IT mm -hmm. is so large that there's room for many companies to uh, add value. And I think that, as I said, our approach is to you know, we're a platform company, right? So you're going to find tremendous companies that will solve one problem for multiple clouds. Mm -hmm. and you're going to find the hyperscaler that have a platform approach for one cloud. We like to think that we can position ourselves in that two by two as the company that has a platform approach across multiple clouds. You know, it's great, Victoria. We've known each other for a long time. It's 12 years of CUBE coverage. Watching things like the CNCF emerge and do great work, watching cloud native kind of go that next level has been fun to watch. And the developers have had a great run. I mean, open source is booming. Developer goodness is, is out there. People are shifting left. A lot of great stuff going with containers and Kubernetes. So looking good on the developer experience front right now. And I think it's only going to get better. But developers don't think about locking. They just want to get the job done, move on to the next line yep. of code. It's the ops teams that we're hearing from that are saying, hey, we love this too, but we got to align with the developer, level up, so to speak. So ops and security teams are saying, hey, I got to run this with automation, with the higher level services. So there seems to be a focus around the super cloud conversation around ops teams. This is your wheelhouse, VMware. You guys do a lot of IT operations and things of that nature. How do you see that and what's the message cross cloud brings to and super cloud brings to the development teams and the ops teams who are really going to be doing DevOps together and or faster? I think if you go back to what we, where we started, right? It, developers run the show. And I think uh, there's been a little bit of inertia in IT organization on the ops side and the security side uh, in catching up to see how, to catch up to where developers are, right? And with the, the, the DevOps revolution, if uh, operators don't really understand what the, the developers need and get ahead of that, they're going to be left behind. So I'll give you an example, like SMB Global, one of our customers, the, their uh, ban, their, their, uh, who runs their operation, basically told me, I had to sit down and, and, and figure out what these developers were doing because I was being left behind. And then, or a Cerner, one of our partners and customers, same thing, they say, okay, we sat down, we realized that we, need, we needed to get ahead of the developers and set those guardrails. rails. All right, these, these are the Kubernetes environment you want to use, okay, this is, this is how we're going to set them up, this is we want to make sure that we shift left security, that we have a single pipeline that feeds that. And Cerner, using our technology, was able to, they made a business decision to move from one hyperscaler, who's going to go unnamed, to another hyperscaler, who's going to go unnamed, and they managed to change all the deployments in four hours. So that's, that's the power of the super cloud, being able to say, hey, developers do whatever you want, but these are the guardrails, <laughs> and, and we're going to be able to like, stay ahead of you and give you the flexibility, but also make sure that operation and security as a saying. Shift is. left, shield right, they awesome, say. Awesome, awesome stuff. We've got 15 seconds. What is super cloud? Bump, what's the bumper sticker? The super cloud is a level of abstraction across any of the public clouds that allows developers to go fast, operators to make sense of what's happening, security to enforce security, and end users to access any application with a great user experience and security. And it's inclusive of on-prem. I'll just throw that in. <laughs> All right, great stuff. Thanks for coming on. We're going to have an industry panel to, to talk about and debate SuperCloud 22. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs>